Hello everybody and welcome to something a little bit different. Uh, today we're looking at how we built the uh, hype emote for Charlotte's Twitch channel. That's Miss Charlotte on Twitch, in case you haven't seen it, go check it out. Uh, so I have kind of become the default illustrator for Frantic Gaming if we're doing stuff like this. Um, you know, Charlotte and Matty make their own thumbnails and things, but uh, I have quite enjoyed uh, working on the, the logo and some of the branding and stuff, so I've sort of took this challenge on uh, right at the start, and now I make all of the Twitch things. So we started out with some stock assets, some giraffes that we licensed, uh, and then everything that you have seen on Charlotte's Twitch channel, all of the uh, subscriber badges, uh, the emotes, the notifications, the bit levels, the leaves, uh, are all basically from me. Uh, you know, putting giraffes in context, adding bits and pieces to them, modifying them a bit, adding glasses and things. Uh, so in this one, uh, we're obviously creating the hype emote. And we had an idea that we wanted to, like, put him in a party setting, maybe. Um, and we wanted some text as well that said hype. So we knew kind of roughly what we wanted. And we obviously wanted to use the happy giraffe as well. Because, you know, it's a happy thing. It's exciting. Uh, and... What's happening here is I'm just drawing some confetti. Uh, and when I say drawing, I mean not really drawing very well, and then tweaking a lot and trying to work out what's wrong with it, and you know, settling on stuff. <laughs> so I'm not a professional illustrator. Uh, I have only ever really done this stuff for fun. I do a bit for work from time to time, but normally very basic stuff. So very simple uh, icons for applications and maybe some posters and things, but. You know, posters are basically just pictures and then text. Uh, it doesn't really involve very much illustration. And if you gave me a pen and paper, I would not be able to draw anything. Uh, but this is the beauty of Illustrator, because even if you can't draw like me, you can put some things down on the on the page, as it were, and then just push stuff around until it looks better. <laughs> so it's quite an organic process. Uh, I am right now in the midst of it. Uh, so we have drawn some stuff, it doesn't look right. I'm now pushing stuff around, trying to work out why it doesn't look right. And the reason it doesn't look right is because I've kind of forgotten the idea of depth. <laughs> so if something is rotating in 3D, obviously part of it gets smaller, part of it gets bigger because it's further away or closer to you. And bits of it get completely obscured because, you know, it's twisting around. So I'm starting to realize what's gone wrong and uh, I'm just sort of tweaking some of these twizzles. I'm gonna call that one a twizzle. Uh, to make it look a little better, a little bit more believable, a little bit less naive. Uh, and I think we've got like a set of stuff now that's sort of starting to look okay, and I'd be happy to use it. Uh, so this is generally how the design process goes. We, we kind of cook up some assets, if you like, some components, essentially, uh, to use in a composition. Uh, so you start off with the detail stuff, in my case, generally, uh, once you've got a concept, uh, and then work on those things until you're happy with them, and then put them all together into a, into a broader thing and get rid of a bunch if you don't want them. Uh, so we're just applying the same lessons learned to the swirl, which didn't look right to start with, but I gave up on, and now I'm revisiting. Uh, and as it turns out, spoiler alert, uh, we don't use any of these swizzles or twirls because uh, they're just too complicated. So as with a lot of design, uh, simplicity is key, and uh, particularly when you're doing something that's so small, like an emote, all of these sort of complicated twists and things, they never look good uh, when it you know, gets compressed down to, what is it, 112 by 112 pixels for the big one, all the way down to 28 by 28 for the very small one. So there's kind of no point. Uh, but for me, it was fun. It was like a learning experience because I'd never really tried to draw very much. So whenever I get the opportunity to to draw a new thing. I kind of like to explore it a bit and work out how you're supposed to draw it. Uh, I'm not uh, good enough to draw a giraffe though, that's for sure. So <laughs> I've got some ways to go yet, but practice makes perfect. Uh, so there we go, we've got a bunch of uh, confetti there that I think I'm happy to use. Uh, so we're gonna move on and look at the, the text component. Uh, the way this normally works, by the way, uh, I'm typically on Discord, um, or I do a bunch of this maybe in my own time and then I bring it to Discord share the screen, and then Charlotte and I would talk through the design, what we like, what we don't like, tweaks that she might want to make to it, um, tweaks that I might want to make to it, but want to get her sign off for. And then we 
you know, put it all together, settle on the colors and produce a thing. So it's, it's a collaborative effort. You know, we sort of iterate through a design typically. Uh, so right now we, we've also got the, the hype text, finding the font took a little bit of time. We've then outlined the font and uh, rounded the corners to make it a bit more bubbly. We've uh, changed the kerning on the font to push the letters together uh, just to make it a bit more condensed, uh, which is you know typically fine for short uh, words. Makes it harder to read generally if you had like a whole sentence, but for just one word, it, it means you can have taller letters uh, that keep their proportions, but in a smaller space. So it, it can work quite well. I think it's worked okay here. Uh, we've ended up settling on a straight text rather than the curve that we saw before because the curve, again, it's just an embellishment that doesn't work very well uh, when you're you know, looking at something small. Uh, so just keep it simple. Uh, we've also masked off the giraffe's head so that his chin can overhang the hype, give it a bit more uh, depth, essentially, in the, in the picture. It just makes it feel a bit, you know, in theory, you know, he's like poking his head up behind and then hanging his head over which I think just ties it all together. Uh, and now we're going to start adding some confetti. Um, the colors are still not settled at this point. We, we sort of get them broadly on theme and then put them all in uh, and then do tweaking afterwards. Um, I think at this point we decided, you know, we're like an hour and a half in, I think, in the real thing. So we're probably going to just make a version uh, that uh, we can save now. Um, and, and potentially use if we had to. So we're just going to tweak the colors of the hype, put it more on brand with the sort of lilac. Uh, and we're going to save the confetti. So we'll just uh, copy this guy down into the different sizes with a small, few small tweaks. All of these tweaks are generally just uh, done visually. You know, you, uh, you zoom out, you look at it, you think the proportions are slightly wrong. You just stretch and pull and push a little bit. It doesn't matter that you're not preserving the proportions of the text as long as you're not doing too much tweaking. Uh, and then you settle on somewhere that works okay. Uh, also had to sort out some issues with the font there where when you turn it into outlines, uh, some of the holes get filled in. So we just sorted that on the P. We actually erased the giraffe behind the P because even though he's supposed to be behind there, um, it makes the text less legible. So that's always something you've got to think about as well is you know, readability. So that's one version that we've essentially sorted. Just do a bit of pixel pushing on the giraffe because his eye looks a bit funny. And we've saved that as a version. And now we're going to sort of move on to the next stage, if you like, which is tweaking it a bit more. So we're going to play around with uh, flipping the giraffe around, which is always a really good way of getting more out of your stock assets. You know, you've got six. Well, actually, you've got 12 because you can flip them all. Uh, we're going to make our confetti background here, which is a piece of cake. Just Put four pieces of confetti in, copy, paste, rotate a few times, dot them around, and you've got something that looks pretty random, but is like a consistent density. So that's uh, a neat little trick. Um, and then, yeah, what we're going to do is basically just delete the stuff that's obscured, uh, push stuff around in the space, space it out a bit more, make it a little less cluttered, um, to less random, essentially. And then add a little bit of variation with this other confetti type, which is just the, the singular twist. I think in the end we only ended up with one in the whole thing, but it just adds a bit more, I, I guess, realism, perhaps, is the, is the word for a cartoon. It's a bit strange. Uh, and now it's color time. Uh, so we already had these balloons from the uh, subscriber notification. Really nice pastel shades. Just applied those at random to the confetti pieces. Really makes the whole thing pop. Uh, stick it all down to size and then start pixel pushing. Uh, so this is where you just have to start sort of forgetting about what it looks like in vector form. Just focus on the pixels, move some edges around, um, just to make sure that all the edges are defined enough and clear enough and even and balanced so that you can still read what it says when it's tiny uh, and still get a notion for what's going on without it being a completely blurred mess. It always looks slightly worse in Illustrator in pixel preview mode than it does for real. Um, so it's a bit of a compromise, but you can get pretty far. And then you end up with the final design, and there it is. Uh, so thank you for watching. Uh, I hope that was interesting in some regard. I'm going to do the same for some of the other uh, emotes I've recorded. Uh, and I will catch you in the next one. Thanks very much. Bye-bye for now.